Kelly Savinainen, and I'm currently working at Aura Biosciences, where we're developing uh, novel drugs for ocular melanoma. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today, though, is uh, work I did when I was at Shire in a project for glaucoma that was very interesting. And thank you all for uh, listening and thanks for the organizers to inviting me to talk uh, today about this. So the title of my talk is Effects on Intraocular Pressure and Aqueous Humor Dynamics in Mice Using a Novel Drug for Glaucoma. And I would like to start the talk a little and introduce it to glaucoma and the drug itself. And uh, then I'm going to go into the uh, more of the methodology and the actual results. So first, glaucoma is a progressive optic neuropathy characterized by visual field defects that ultimately lead to irreversible blindness. The changes in vision is due to the loss of retinal ganglion cells. One of the most important, or really the only uh, modifiable risk factor for glaucoma is raised intraocular pressure. And therefore you can treat glaucoma by uh, using intraocular pressure lowering agents, or you can do surgery to increase the outflow. And what you really want a patient to be at is the so-called target pressure. That means that you have an intraocular pressure under which there's no further damage to be expected. And intraocular pressure is a function of the production of liquid aqueous humor by the ciliary processes of the eye, and it's drainage through the trabecular meshwork. So if you look at the image below, you can see that this is a healthy eye, this first one, and you have the flow of aqueous humor uh, the aqueous humor sits here in the anterior chamber and it flows out through these drainage canals. And uh, in a glaucoma eye, these drainage canals are blocked. That is gonna cause fluid to build up in this anterior chamber here, which you can see in this last image. And when that happens, you're gonna get increased pressure on the blood vessels and the optic nerve. And this is what causing uh, the damage to the retinal ganglion cells. So if we move on, uh, there are three different mechanisms to reduce intraocular pressure. The first one, you can reduce aqueous humor production, or you can in increase uh, the outflow of the aqueous humor. And you, there is two different outflows, and the, you can you have the outflow of the, via the trabecular meshwork, which is called a conventional outflow. This is the primary outflow, and that is about 70% of the outflow goes this way. And then you can increase the uveosclera or unconventional outflow. This is the secondary outflow from the eye, and that is about 20 to 30% of the outflow. So uh, just to orient you to this image here, I wanted to let you know that the aqueous humor is produced in the ciliary body, which is here, which is in the posterior chamber of the eye. It then flows uh, into the anterior chamber. Uh, this way. And then it exits the eye either through the trabecular meshwork and into Schlem's canal, uh, which is the conventional pathway, or it goes out through the ciliary muscle or other downstream tissues, and that is called a, an unconventional pathway. So there are already uh, a lot of drugs that are on the market for glaucoma. And one of the oldest drugs that's been approved uh, for a long time is latanoprost or prostaglandins. And they are targeting the secondary outflow, uh, which as I said, is 20 to 30% of the outflow. Uh, there are timol there's timolol, which is a beta blocker. And that one is reducing the aqueous humor production. So you basically get less inflow into the eye. What I'm going to talk about today is SHP639, which is an NPRB agonist. It actually affects all three of these uh, 
mechanisms that I'm gonna show in the results later. And the main mechanism though, is that it's increased the primary outflow, the outflow through the trabecular meshwork. And SHP639 involves a novel target. And it, so I wanna talk a little bit about the target and the actual mechanism and how 639 are activating NPRB. So natriuretic peptides are a class of cyclic peptides that play a role in reduction of blood pressure and fluid volume. There are three of those and it's ANP, BNP and CNP. Uh, they all have vascular relaxation properties, but the C-type natriuretic peptide or CNP lacks the diuretic and natriuretic properties of the other NPs. Natriuretic peptide receptor B or MPRB is the primary signaling receptor for CNP. And the sequence for both the MPRB and the CNP is very well preserved between spe species. That is something that we pharmacologists love because it makes it so much easier to run your animal studies when you have a well-preserved receptor and ligand. So SHP639 is a nine amino acid that is synthetically made. It's a CNP analog and it binds and activates NPRB. Uh, it's not only potent, it's also very selective. And we did some in vitro studies and we can show that it activates NPRB uh, to a much uh, higher degree than NPRA. And there's about a 35 fold difference here in potency. Uh, the formulation for 639 is an ocular formulation, so, uh, so you can administer it as a topical um, drop. And if you look at the schematic down here, it's just to emphasize what's, what's happening. And SHP639 binds to NPRB, which gets activated. Uh, the granulite cyclases get activated and you're gonna get uh, GAT, GTB getting transformed into cyclic GMP, which are increasing into the cells. This is gonna cause muscle relaxation and relaxation of the trabecular meshwork. And when the trabecular meshwork is relaxed, you increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. And that will lead to a reduction of intraocular pressure. So this talk is really about aqueous humor dynamics and aqueous humor dynamics to be able to show that we are affecting several different mechanisms with SHP639. And the aqueous humor dynamics studies uh, are done to evaluate the outflow mechanism. And you perform this in anesthetized animals. We choose to use a, a mouse model here because the eye in the mouse is, has similar aqueous production and aqueous humor turnover rate as the human eye. And it has the, both the conventional and the uveoscular outflow. And that uh, makes mouse model very similar to how it works in humans. So it's a good model for aqueous humor dynamic studies. Uh, another thing to keep in mind with these studies is that you can theoretically de determine uh, IOP with math using the Goldman equation, where you have intraocular pr pressure. It equals aqueous humor production, which is the inflow, minus the uveoscleral outflow divided by the conventional outflow. And you also have to take episclerovenous venous pressure into account because the episclerovenous venous pressure is gonna affect the uh, pressure in the eye and they parallel each other. So when one goes up, the other one goes up too. And when one goes down, the other one goes down as well. So it's also an important parameter uh, for evaluating intraocular pressure. So the first thing we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to make sure that the reduction we saw in intraocular pressure in mouse was similar to what we have seen in other studies we've done. 
So it's very common to do glaucoma studies in rabbit and dog. And we had done extensive studies in both rabbit and dog and saw a maximum IOP reduction about 30 to 40%. And because these studies are in mice, we wanted to do the same kind of studies in mouse. And first we did it in a conscious mouse uh, using a tonal lab rebound tonometer. And you can see that in the picture here, you have the mouse and this is the tonometer. It's actually very similar to, I, I'm sure that most of you have been to the eye doctor to check your pressure in your eyes. And then they either use this kind of tonometer, which has a little uh, thing here at the end that very, very lightly touches the eye. Or you might have uh, experience using one of those machines that use an air puff instead of uh, this little stick here. So what we did was to do a dose response study with SHP639, we used doses of 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.6%. And it was given as a topical drop of five microliters. Uh, you treat one eye, and that way you can use the contralateral eye as an untreated control. So that's how the actual IOP studies are done. And for the results from this study, uh, you can see in the graph here in the left. And we do see a nice dose-dependent IOP reduction after SHP639 treatment. And you can see the doses here is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.6. And at 0.6%, we see uh, the maximum IOP reduction, and that is about 36%. We're using Timolol as a positive control in these studies, which have very similar curve as to the highest dose of SHP639. Uh, I would just mention that Timolol works really well in mice, but it does not uh, necessarily work as well as rabbit and dog. So, uh, but it works really well as a positive control in these kind of studies. So we decided to use the 0.6% uh, dose level at two hours where we see the maximum IOP reductions for further aqueous humor dynamic studies. And if you look at the graph to the right, it's just a different way to express your IOP reduction uh, where we're looking at the whole time frame. So you're basically plotting the area under the curve. And if you do it this way, you also see a nice dose dependent response. So before I go into the actual results of the aqueous humor dynamics method um, studies, I wanna talk a little bit more about the, the method. And as I said, we wanted to evaluate aqueous humor dynamics uh, in anesthetized mice by using constant flow infusion. We did this at two hours post SHP639 treatment since that was where we had our maximum IOP reducing effect. Uh, this method used to measure aqueous humor dynamic is a novel method in such that all values contributing to IOP can be assessed in the same eye. And the advantage with this is that you can get a complete profile of aqueous humor dynamics for each eye studied, all within a single experimental session. And the method itself is that you first measure the IOP uh, with tonometry, like I showed you in the conscious mice, but you do it in the anesthetized mice because they are anesthetized during this kind of study. And then you are uh, evaluating the conventional outflow uh, by, the, and by multiple flow rate infusion technique and by measuring the episclera venous pressure by a manometry. Uh, animals are then euthanized and measurements of IOP and the conventional outflow is repeated. And by comparing IOP and the conventional outflow before and after mice are euthanized, values for aqueous humor production, previous clear outflow, the conventional outflow, and the episclear venous uh, pressure can all be obtained from 
the same eye. And if you assume that uh, aqueous humor production uh, and episclerovenous venous pressure is zero uh, <clears throat> when the mice are euthanized and that the uveoscleral outflow is un unchanged after euthanization. You can uh, get all the values you get from these studies, put it into the Goldman equation and basically calculate all the parameters. And this is the actual setup. And uh, this here represents the mouse eye. So you cannulate the mouse eye uh, and you connect it to a flow through pressure transducer for continuous determination of pressure within the system. And then on the opposing end of the pressure transducer, uh, it's connected to a three-way valve, which is connected to the microdialysis infusion pump and the manometer. So this is the setup uh, with the eye, the, the cannulation of the eye and all the different parts that are measuring the pressure and the outflow. And that is all connected to a computer system. So you can uh, use software to look at the data. So now we get into the actual uh, results from the study. And as I mentioned before, we did the intraocular pressure measurement again in anesthetized mouse this time. And what you can see is that you get a 32% reduction in intraocular pressure, which is very similar to what we saw in the conscious mice where we saw 36%. So that is all good. So now we can move into the more interesting parameters. So here is uh, the results of the outflow facility. This is the primary outflow, uh, the outflow through the trabecular meshwork. And what you can see at the, is that there is a significant increase in this outflow. And we see 156% increase in the conventional outflow. We also see that we have a decrease in aqueous humor production. And we see about a 41% uh, reduction in the aqueous humor production. Uh, and in summary, this is really good because you do want to increase the outflow and you want to decrease the inflow, which is the aqueous humor production. So we have uh, uh, been successful in doing that here. And then we move on to a couple of more parameters. Uh, you're also measuring the episclera venous pressure. And I said they are paralleling each other. So if you do see a decrease in episclera venous pressure, it means that you also have a decrease in the ocular pressure. And we do see a, a nice significant decrease here in the episclera venous pressure. It's about 32%. And the only thing that are not contributing to um, the reduced pressure in the eye is that we actually see a decrease in uveoscleral outflow. Of course, if, you, if everything had been super great, we would have seen an increase in this outflow as well. But you have to think about that this is the secondary outflow. So even if we see a 53% decrease in this outflow, it's only responsible for 20 to 30% of the total outflow. Uh, while where we saw that really nice increase in outflow in the conventional outflow of over 150%, that is responsible for 70% of the outflow. So if you add all these different parameters together, the collected response is a reduction in intraocular pressure which was also true when we're actually looking at the pressure, which is about 30 to 40% uh, reduced in all animal uh, models we had tested previously. So then we come to the conclusion, and uh, that is that SHP639 induced a dose-dependent IOP reduction in mice. Uh, SHP639 is unique in the sense that it has three distinct mechanisms for lowering IOP. 
and it reducing aqueous humor formation uh, to about 41%. It increased the trabecular outflow or the conventional outflow with as much as 156%. It's also reducing episclerovenous venous pressure to 32%. So there is a reduction, as I said, in the sclera outflow, but since this mechanism is only responsible for 20 to 30% of the total outflow, it has a minimal impact on overall intraocular pressure. So in summary, SHP639 is uh, an efficacious IOP lowering agent that involves a novel therapeutic target and a unique combination of mechanism of actions. And I would also want to add that in glaucoma, it's very common to uh, add several drugs together when you give a therapy to a patient. So if you can't lower the pressure enough with one drug, usually a patient starts on latanoprost. You add another drug with a different mechanism. So we have some studies also showing that this drug, I'm not talking about that today, but if you're using SHP639 in combination with latanoprost, uh, which are increasing the, the uveosclera outflow facility, we have a very nice additive effect in combination. So that is something that would be very promising when you need to uh, lower the pressure further in patients with severe uh, increase in intraocular pressure and prevent uh, further vision loss and further damage to the uh, ganglion cells. So before I end, I also wanna thank some people that has been very interested instrumental in this research, and it's Dr. Cameron Miller and Dr. Yuku Peng. Uh, they are both in the University of North Texas, and they are responsible for developing this mouse model, uh, where you can really measure all the parameters in, in one eye. And also Dr. Serene Josiah, which was the program leader for this project, uh, back at the Shire Times, which is actually now Takeda. Uh, but uh, that's a, the change in the pharmaceutical industry is always ongoing. So I think that's it for me. And I'm happy to take any questions if there is any. Thank you very much, Nella. That was a great presentation. Looks like you're doing some pioneering work. Um, we do have a question. Have you looked at a combination studies with other approved drugs like Timolol or others? Yes, we have done uh, studies with both latanoprost as well as Timolol, and especially the latanoprost together with this drug works really well uh, and gives us, a, in some cases, a synergistic effect and in some cases, an additive effect. Because if you remember, this drug is is targeting all mechanisms except for the uveoscleral outflow, which is where you the target for the channel and there's also many other prostaglandins that are now on the market, and it's been on the market. Latanoprost has been on the market for so long, so it's generic at this point. So it works really well together with other drugs. Okay, thank you, and let me acknowledge that question came from Eric Furfine. Okay. Now we have a question from Laura Prendergast. Lots of good evidence that SHP69 reduces IOP. Interesting that it has a very different effects on trabecular and vascular outflow. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that poorly. Yeah. Um, any speculation on the endogenous function? Yeah, so talk? we've done some studies to look at, you know, receptor, uh, where the receptors are in the eye for NPRB. And it turns out that there is a lot of receptors in the trabecular meshwork and less so in, in, the, in the ciliary muscle. So we do believe that it might be the reason to why we get, you know, a, a much more relaxation in the trabecular meshwork. And that is causing the 
increasing in the conventional outflow through the Tribeca meshwork. Uh, that needs to be studied further. I wouldn't say that that's 100% the case, but that is something we, we do believe that's the case. Okay, a follow-on question from Eric Furfine, rock inhibitor combinations. I'm sure he's not talking about music there. R-O-C-K inhibitor combinations. <laughs> Yeah, it's rock in a verse. We have not done anything in combination with rock inhibitors when, as you know, I, I'm not working on this anymore. And when I was working on it, the rock inhibitor was not approved yet. And, and we didn't have one to test, but uh, it would be very interesting to, to do. Okay. And I believe if you're looking at the mechanism, there is potential for in, uh, an increase in effect with a combination with a rock inhibitor as well. Very good. Thank you, Nelly. Uh -huh.